It's night when the town of Gaujai comes out of the wilderness and beckons to Mark Dillon like a painted skinny hag. If Dodge City has a sister, this is it. The marshal rides past the white buffalo, dismounts, and starts to tie his horse to a hitching post whittled to the shape of a Pawnee girl. When suddenly the gun in his back tells him that he's not alone. You won't like it here, Marshal. Pretty as it is, you won't like it. No. No. But don't turn around, Marshal. I'm shy and I'm modest and I, I embarrass easy. Uh, isn't that so, Harold? <laughs> I'm new here. Back in Dodge City, the etiquette's a little more formal. Then go back to Dodge. They all drift here to Dodge City one time or another. The buffalo killers, the saddle bums, the spoilers. It's the end of the track and the start of the wilderness. It's a place to stop and take the kind of pleasure you need. It's a place to pass through and sometimes it's a place to die. Mark Dillon's part of it is a sun charred shack, rent paid by the United States government and a marshal's badge furnished free. He's there now, watching the street from his window, smoking a thin black cigar. He's several inches over six feet in height with a gaunt, bronze face. A faded shirt seems molded across his heavy shoulders, and a gun belt made of yellow elk's hide hangs around his narrow hips, the big black-handled coat in his holster shiny from use. He stands there, erect and unbending as always, watching the heat plump itself with Kansas dust and roll in towards the town. Come in. Your name, Dillon? You the United States Marshal? Yes. They said there was a steady Marshal here, still alive after six months. They've been lying to you. Four months. They say you and your gun can break a man's heart at 50 yards. What's on your mind, ma'am? I want you to saddle up and get down the gouge eye. Why? My husband. My husband owns the White Buffalo Roulette Music Whiskey. They say it's the roulette wheel that's crooked. Well, now, ma'am, I'll tell you what to do. There's a fella in Dodge, Sin Killer Stocks. Saves souls by the bushel, trumpet playing, everything. Tell Sin Killer about your husband. In Gouge, I the killer man who runs a crooked wheel. I don't want my husband dead. Well, look, ma'am, I don't... Abigail Contuarius, that's my name. Yeah, all right, Mrs. Contuarius, but you don't need a marshal. You need an honest husband. That wheel's no more crook in the barrel, Steve. If it was, I wouldn't take none of the money's won from it. Sure. Don't sure me, Marshal. The money don't just mean money to me. It means books for Indian kids and writing stuff, slates and all. Ah, missionary, huh? Oh, me. For the gambler and the philanderer and a toper for a husband. I I teach Indian kids, that's all. Teach them to behave and a uh, little learning, that's all. Well, that's good work, ma'am. These towns could use more people like you. Don't sniff around me. You marshals are supposed to mean law and order and the rights of decent people. Gouge, I could use some of that. You coming? Do I have to ride my mule some more? Ride it back to Gouge, I. I'll be along. Make it soon, marshal. There'll be a convulsion down there if you don't. It's night when the town of Gaujai comes out of the wilderness and beckons to Mark Dillon like a painted skinny hag. If Dodge City has a sister, this is it. The marshal rides past the white buffalo, dismounts, and starts to tie his horse to a hitching post whittled to the shape of a Pawnee girl. When suddenly the gun in his back tells him that he's not alone. You won't like it here, marshal. Pretty as it is, you won't like it. No. No. Don't turn around, Marshal. I'm shy and I'm modest and I embarrass easy. Uh, isn't that so, Harold? <laughs> yeah. See? Harold thinks it's so. Harold had his tongue clipped. A Paiute. Maybe it was too long. Oh, no, that's not a genteel thing to say to Harold, Marshal. He takes offense. I'm new here. Back in Dodge City, the etiquette's a little more formal. Then go back to Dodge. We're very happy here in Gouge. I like uh, little birds. You could spoil it. I was invited. Special invitation. Well, your invitation's canceled, Marshal. The dance is over. You have slept long, Chico. 
without dreams. How do you know there were no dreams, Tamar? Because I saw death give you a little piece of himself and then ride away on his black pony. Yeah, I'm lucky. <clears throat> How'd I get here? Senor Contuarist and I brought you here. You are very lucky, Chico. The bullet was for your heart, but it spent itself in your shoulder. Oh, Chico, I'm glad it was not your time to die. You want me to live, Tamar? Yes, Chico. I want you to live. But it was Contuarius' time to die. Is that it? Perhaps his grave has been empty too long. You knew him well? See, si, I knew him. Well enough to kill him? I did not kill him. Senor Contuarius was my protector. Did he protect you from himself? I like your mouth better when it is gentle, Chico. Then who did kill him? I do not know. Chico. How come you picked this place? It is a place Senor Contuarius and I knew well. I see. I... I persuaded Senor Booth you were dead. <laughs> Booth persuades easy. He persuades easy for Tamar. Senor Booth does not like too much attention. Well, he's going to get a lot of mine, Tamar. I don't advise it, Chico. Oh? If you live, go back to Dodge City. If you die, die in Dodge City. <laughs> Bullen follows her into the casino. He gets a glass of rye whiskey and takes it to a corner table where he kills the next hour dealing cards to himself. Gradually, the room begins to fill up, and he moves to a secluded spot behind the stairs where he has a clear view of the roulette table. There, he quietly waits. About eight, she walks through the door. Tamar. Tamar in a dress of red. Tamar buckled with silver. She strolls over to the table and puts some chips on the black as Greg, without once looking at her, spins. Seven black, seven page, black page, place your bet. On the next spin, Tamar wins again. Then she loses. She doubles her bets and wins more times than she loses. In an hour, the marshal estimates there is roughly $20,000 stacked up in front of her. In an hour, there isn't any doubt in his mind that they're a team. And Greg is spinning a crooked wheel. And then, just before she bets number 13, he notices Greg fold his thumb under his palm and rub the side of his face. In a dry creek bed along the trail from Gaojai back to Dodge City stands a small clump of cottonwood. The marshal slowly rides down into it and pulls up his horse. A ground squirrel scurries off a log and loses itself in the shadows. Then he's alone. He throws one knee across the saddle horn and sits there, rolling a cigarette and thinking about Tamar. Back in Gaojai, he saw to it that they gave her a guitar. But Tamar won't be singing much longer. She'll hang within a week. The marshal lights his cigarette. Then suddenly he straightens up, savagely kicks his boot back into the stirrup and rides hard out of the trees onto the trail to Dodge. The rest of the way home, country's dust gets inside his mouth and it stays there. <laughs> 